Hey guys, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We are so excited to be diving in today and starting our morning devotional <laughs> slash book club with Pastor Joey's book, The Prophetic Journey, where yeah. we're going to be breaking down Pastor Joey's book chapter by chapter. And Fernando and I are so honored and so privileged to be kicking it off with chapter one, The Power of a Dream. In this chapter, Pastor Joey focuses on the life of Joseph. Joseph, so yeah. No, you're right. I, <laughs> so I'm sorry, sorry. I'm like, uh, Joseph is one of my favorite, uh, I wouldn't say care, but favorite person in the Bible because the fact that yeah. I, I'm a dreamer. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people, you guys are dreamers. Everybody's a dreamer. You may say it, you may not, but mm -hmm. everybody's a dreamer yeah. at some level. And he shows example of story of Joseph his and his life. Uh, that you know what if you have a dream you got to hold on to it it doesn't matter what it costs you got to hold on to it so the way that this this book this chapter is going to start out is it talks about the dream that god gave joseph and joseph was so young when he was given this dream by god and i think just as me personally i think of you know when i relate my life to uh a, a Bible story or a, a, a figure from the Bible, I try to connect it to my own personal life and how would I feel if I was that person or how would I have reacted in that situation? Um, and I think of the life of Joseph and being so young when God gave him that dream. 17. Yeah, he was 17 years old and he was so young and to think like how he may have felt when God revealed that to him, you know, like, what does this mean? Like, am I even capable of this? Why me? How could you ask me to do this? Or why am I even worthy of this? And just being at that age and then experiencing something like that is crazy to me. And I think the, I think God sets up everything so perfectly because just imagine your life at 17. You, you can remember there's things that you weren't ready for. You, you may know kind of know like you know at some 17 years think they know it all but in deep inside we don't know we didn't know nothing <laughs> and it was like fear but we have to say it because we have this fight whatever but think about in that moment here's this crazy dream that joseph mm -hmm. had and he says man this is kind of crazy but this is a huge thing let me share this with my dad or let me share this with my brothers what mm -hmm. you would think that i'll be comforted in that season and to get rejected to yeah. get to get literally rejected God gave him this vision, his dream as a rope of hope and then said, hey, hold on to this rope and I'm going to yeah. take you to the best experience of your life. You may not think it during the line of this pulling and tugging, but it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So if you hold on to my word and hold tight to what I say, my promises, it's going to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. So as Fernando mentioned, the story kind of starts out, God gave Joseph this dream and then he goes and he shares the story with his brothers and his family. And as we all know, if we're familiar with the story of Joseph, he was rejected. And I think oftentimes in our own lives, when we're given a dream, we share it with people that we love. We you get share excited. It, yeah, you get excited. You share it with people that you care about. And most of the time, people are like, cool, that's awesome. They're super encouraging. And they encourage you to follow it, like fight for it, you know, work hard for it. But then unfortunately, there's people in your life that are the dream killers, like Pastor Joey talks about in the book. There are people that reject your dream, that they um, they think you're crazy. They think that you're not worthy of all that dream that God gave you. And they're really discouraging. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, unfortunately, there's also people in the world that they just don't want you to succeed. And that really sucks. But... It's a reality of life. There's a know? lot, yeah. There's a lot of people. They could be your, your closest friends, and they don't mean it. I, I don't believe that they mean that they don't want you to succeed. It's just they're so insecure about their own, mm -hmm. their own life that they cannot see them. They can't see you get past the, where they're at. Mm -hmm. And the moment that their friends or whatever gets to a certain level, uh, they feel insecure because they're they haven't got there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to experience DKs. We used to call it me and Adrian. <laughs> I, I'll share you a quick story. I always think of crazy ideas. And then my wife will just kind of share is like, okay, well, how do you do this? And, you know, with my lack of knowledge of just my dream, I would say, you're just a DK, a dream killer. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't like she was being bad, bad at anything like that. But I'm just, just trying to bring the reality, reality. of life what into is the it? situation. What is like, the how is it possible? Yeah. <laughs> What is the reality of what you're saying? Because you don't make any sense. I mean, it's a cool idea, but what can you put it into paper? Can you put it into reality? Can you set it? And it took a lot of time and process of certain things that I was passionate about. Mm -hmm. But during along the way, you'll get people. And I think God, I won't say that God doesn't do anything on purpose, but 
God's going to know that the people in your life are going to do, certain people are going to do that to you. And I feel like when those moments come to attack you, that's when God says, okay, now here's that rope I gave you. This prophetic word I gave you, here's that rope, hold on to it. Now let's walk. And you're going to get people tugging and try to let that your hand go. And it's your job to say, do you believe in God's word? That's right. I think that even those people, those are the people that are going to start to set your dream in motion. Because if we look at the life of Joseph, when he shared his dreams with his brothers, they hated him for it. They threw him in a pit and they sold him off. And that's where the dream started. That's yeah. where his journey, his prophetic journey started, is by those people that rejected him and didn't believe in him. It set yeah. everything in motion. Just imagine like... Uh... God says, you know, I'm going to have to do something. I'm not going to tell you because if I tell you, probably you will say no to me. But mm -hmm. I'm going to have to separate your family for a season so yeah. I could be able to fulfill your dream or what I have for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of you guys have been in your guys' situation? You lost everything from a, a dream or from a, a attempted to open a job, a new job or a new business. And you lost everything. He says, God, you told me, though. You don't know in that heartache or that experience what you learned in that. So you can endure and handle. And Joseph, he had to be betrayed, mm -hmm. left behind, forgotten, forgotten, and then not even that. He got put into slavery where mm -hmm. he had to work. I mean, just imagine this guy. He still believed and still had God. You're for me. You're not against me. And I believe in your process. Mm -hmm. How many situations have you been in in your life where you know that God gave you something, but all the circumstances around you are like God? I thought you gave this to me. You put this dream inside of me. You led me to this place in my life or you're leading me to this place in my life. But everything around me is contrary to what you have put inside of me. And that's what Joseph faced. Like Fernando said, he was betrayed by his family. He was put into slavery. He was betrayed by Potiphar's wife. He was thrown in the dungeon, you know. And even in that, even in the dungeon, he was placed, people were placed around him that we're gonna lead him to his ultimate dream and fulfilling that dream. Yeah, absolutely. And the cool thing is, is like, I wanna ask you guys that question. Like, how many times you've been in a situation that it was just, it hurt too much and you didn't wanna mm -hmm. step further into the next, the next goal? God wants you to say, when those moments come in, when you're saying, I am done, Good. Now say, Lord, you take over my situation right now. Because mm -hmm. God wants you to learn in, in the seasons of chaos, in the season of big dreams that God has for you. God expects you to lean on him. Mm -hmm. He wants you to lean on him all the way. There are certain things that me and my wife has gone through. Mm -hmm. And the moment that I say, I'm going to lean on to it and trust that this word says, okay, you got my back. It scares the life out of me. I don't know what it's going to take me. It could take me to back to my first mistake or it's going to take me to the next level. And now every morning now during that anticipation of that event, I was praying. I was leaning on God. And God says, this is if I got to push you to this level just to lean on me, I'm going to do it. That's right. Because he wants your attention. He wants your time. And if you have dreams that doesn't scare you enough, you better you better think of something. You need bigger. to dream bigger. Exactly. <laughs> and I think through those situations, like Fernando was saying, those that's the development process where Pastor Joey's talking about the development. It's in those situations where faith is built, where character is built, where perseverance is built. When you're able to walk out all of those situations that you are faced with, but still keep your focus on God and still keep your focus on the dream. All the things that are developed within you are all things that you are going to need to actually walk in what God has for you. If God gave us a dream and he was just like, here it is, we wouldn't even know how to handle it because we wouldn't be prepared for it. You have to walk out things. You have to experience things. You have to experience loss. You have to experience hurt. Um, you have to experience good. There's also good that comes along with it. But all of those situations, they develop you in order to really walk out and live out the dream that God has put inside of you. You got to have the tenacity of yes. Joseph. Ooh, I like that word. You have to have the tenacity <laughs> of Joseph. Well, it's not my word. He pee <laughs> He says, as long as you hold on to the dream and do not allow the dream killers to take it, God will see it through mm -hmm. and promote you. That, yeah. If I can encourage you guys uh, this morning is that there's going to be people to be able to establish uh, their position as dream killers. But just think of it as like the next step of your level up. Mm -hmm. If there was any dream killers in your situation, 
maybe that dream wasn't big enough. But when, when God says, hey, I'm going to put people in your life that is going to help you. But in that same time, someone's going to probably try to take you out. Have tenacity like Joseph. Because remember, Joseph even had people use his ability and still didn't benefit him. He, they use his ability, his giftings, and it's still people are going to be in your situations in your life. He, Joseph learned like every aspect about life during his whole journey. During his whole journey, and then at the very end when God says, hey, I'm going to promote you, he was able to use all those principles, right? Yeah. And there's a baby back there. And <laughs> this is real life, guys. Real, real life. <laughs> Here, take it over. We'll get it. Um, no, but another thing, you know, when we look at the life of Joseph in closing the chapter, it talks about dominion, right? And um, when we look at his life, everything that he walked out, at the end of the story, we're able to see how he took his place and his position and what God had called him to. How God took him from a pit and then took him to the palace. And where his family even was able to come back and see like, listen, this is me. Like, this is where I'm at. You guys may have tried to take me out, but God preserved me. I held on to the dream. I held on to that rope of hope and I held on to God through my journey and here I am and even through that even through all the heartache and through all the hurt and through all the letdowns I'm living my dream and you my family now can come in forgiveness and 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 experience this with me yeah. and be preserved let's talk about forgiveness because that's the hardest thing that I think today that we face because we we all have our opinions and our thoughts and our minds but sometimes God says like there's gonna be the people during along the road that are gonna hurt you so bad Mm -hmm. but I've, I've given you this journey so you can learn to become well-rounded. Mm -hmm. Joseph became well-rounded during his experience. He mm -hmm. says, now I want you to use all those teachings that you've been through and gives mercy to those people and love on them because they don't know. A lot of times people just don't know what they're doing and they may not ever know till you come into their lives mm -hmm. and show them what correction or love is or that type of love. Or you might show example of forgiveness that they never seen before, you know? Mm -hmm. So Adrian's gonna also mention uh, the PowerPoints mm -hmm. so we can be able to close this. But I hope you guys are encouraged so far because I am. You know, so with Pastor Joey's PowerPoints at the end of the chapter in chapter one, PowerPoint number one is keeping and guarding God's word will bring you the key of David, opening doors that no one can shut, shutting doors that no one can open. And number two is Jesus has given us the power and authority to operate in his name and our dream may bring devastation, but it's all part of the development needed to bring us into a place of dominion. So we want to encourage you guys today, if you have a dream, if God has placed something on the inside of you, hold on to it. Hold on to God. Stay focused on the dream and walk out with tenacity everything that God is putting before you, circumstances that are surrounding you. Hold on to the dream. Keep focus on that and share with us. What has God put inside of you? What have you learned through this chapter? What have you learned through your experience of God and following your dream and, and seeking him out in this season? Man, you're hot. Are you talking like oh preaching that word? Woo! Anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us. Please leave a comment. Let us know what you have learned in chapter one. Mm -hmm. And we love you. We, we can't wait to see you guys. Be sure to tune in on Monday for chapter two. And we can't wait to see you. See you guys soon. Love bye you guys. Bye. bye.